We are going to analyze a real Instagram data from a small channel. So we are going to do some exploratory data analysis and also we are going to assess the performance of each post using Python programming language. So first of all, I should read this data and the link to this file is in the description below. As you can see, it has two columns, the time column and the number of likes. And this zero means the origin of time, means the reference point. For example, if we consider, for example, January 15 as the reference point, as the origin of time, so it is very clear that one means January 16, three means January 18, and so on. But the data itself doesn't have that column, and I have added that column in order to explain the structure of this data. But the data itself doesn't have that column. So first of all, we need to read that data in Python, and for doing so, we need to use the pandas package. So I simply type import pandas, import pandas as pd, that's it. And remember that pandas is not a built-in package, so you should install it first. So for example, using pip install pandas in the terminal or in the command window. Window. Then I should simply type pd, which is basically the alias name of this pandas package. So I simply type pd and I use the read csv in order to read that csv file because that file was a csv file. And I should go to this folder and I need the path of this file. So I right click on it, go to properties and then security tab. And I should copy this path and here I should paste it. So. I should paste it here and remember to put R before this a string. This R means raw text. It means consider this text as it is because if you don't put R before this string, you should convert all of these back slashes into forward slash like this or you should convert all of these back slashes into two back slashes. So as you can see, putting R before this string is very easy. So that's it. And I store the result in a variable, let's say called DF, I mean data frame. And also let's print the DF because I want to explain something. So let's print it. So here is our data frame. So from now on, we want to do some analysis or let's say answer some questions and you can pause the video and think about it. Whenever I ask the question, you can pause the video and think about it and then we are going to do it in Python. So the first question is, what is the mean of post interval? What do I mean by post interval? For example, as you can see, the post interval between these two posts is one day, between these two is two days, between these two is two days, between these two is four days, zero, two, two, and so on. So for doing so, I want to use the NumPy package, so I simply import the NumPy package as well. So I import NumPy as NP, NP as the alias name for that NumPy package. And then I simply type, let's minimize this a little bit. So here I simply type NP dot diff because I want to use this difference function in order to calculate the difference. And I want to calculate the difference for this time column. So I simply type DF and I want the time column. So I'm going to calculate the difference for the time column of this data frame. And I want to store the results in a variable, let's say called time diff. So I store the results in a variable, let's say called time diff. There it is. And remember that by default, the N argument is one. It means how many times do you want to calculate this difference? So it is very clear that in this example, we want to calculate this difference for one time. So we simply pass N is equal to one. So now if I print the time diff and if I run a code, you can see here is the difference between different times, I mean the post interval. And now we want to calculate the mean of this time diff variable. So in order to do so, we simply type np.mean because you want to calculate the mean of this time diff variable. And let's print this. So I want to print, for example, something like this. The mean is equal to and this is the mean of the time diff variable. So if I run a code, you can see the mean is 4.95. But if we print the time diff once again, you can see here in this data, we have some outliers like this one. As you can see, this is 61. If you look at this data, you can see that the average should be about two, but here we can see that because we have some outliers, like for example, 61, 10, 14, 12, and these kinds of stuff, for example, 16, and these kinds of stuff. So the mean has been skewed a little bit. So in this case, I think the median is a better choice because the median is less sensitive to outliers. So I simply type print and I want to print the median. So the median is NP dot median of the time diff variable. There it is. And if I run a code, 
you can see the median is 2, which is more realistic. And this 2 means by average, or let's say by median, the difference, the time difference between two successive posts is about two days. But now because I want to get a better sense of the distribution of this time diff variable, I want to plot a histogram of that time diff variable. So I simply type import matplotlib.plot as plt, which is used for plotting. And here I simply type plt.hist, I mean histogram. And I want to plot the histogram for our time diff variable. And in the next line, I simply type plt.show in order to show the chart. And if I run a code, we can see here is our histogram. And as you can see, a big portion of the data is less than six, which you can see that kind of a stuff using this histogram. But now consider this. Suppose that after some analysis, which I'm going to tell you how to do it in Python, I know that on 90% of the time, the post interval, I mean the interval between two successive posts, is less than a recall to 10 days. But how do I know this and how to calculate this in Python? So for doing so, I simply use the NumPy package. So I simply type np.percentile in order to calculate the percentile. And we want to calculate the percentile for the time diff variable. There it is. And the Q is, for example, 90. I mean, you want to calculate the 90th percentile. There it is. And I want to store the results in a variable, let's say called Q. That's it. And for example, if I print the Q variable, and let's cut these lines. And if I run a code, you can see Q is about 10 days. But now let's plot this as a vertical line on our chart as well. So for doing so, that's very easy. You're going to simply type plt.axv line. It means a line which is vertical and it is along the axis. There it is. And I should pass the number and the number is going to be the Q. I mean the vertical line is going to be placed at this position and for example we can use different colors so let's choose for example for the color i want to pass a dark green so i want to pass dark green for this color and by the way for this chart we can use different colors so let's choose for example dark cyan for this chart and also we can use different lines, different line styles, I mean, for example, if we pass LS, I mean line style, we can use, for example, dashed line style as well. And if I run a code, you can see here is the result, and this is the 90th percentile. And also, if you want, you can put a text on this chart as well. Suppose that you want to put a text here in order to denote that this line is a line for the 90th percentile. So, for example, suppose that you want to put that text somewhere here, somewhere around here. As you can see, the x coordinate of this point is about 11, and the y coordinate is about 32, 33. So, let's do this as well. So here I simply type plt.txt because we want to add a text and on our plot. There it is. And first of all, we should add the x and y coordinate. So the x coordinate is 11, the y coordinate is 33, for example. And the string, I mean the text, is, for example, 90th percentile. And also remember that you can customize this text, but we're not going to do it in this video. So if I run a code, we can see that we have a simple text here at this coordinate. So the third step is to assess the post performance. And for doing so, first of all, let's plot a line chart for the number of likes of different posts. So for doing so, I simply type plt dot plot because you want to plot a line chart and the x coordinate is going to be the time is going to be the time column of our data frame that's it and the y variable i mean the y axis of our chart is going to be the number of likes so we simply type df and we want to use the likes column there it is so this is the x axis and this is the y-axis. And now we want to, for example, add something. For example, you want to use a marker. You're going to use a circle. You're going to use circle for our marker. And the color of our line is going to be black. And the color of our marker, I mean marker face color, MFC means marker face color, is going to be, for example, blue. That's it. And if I simply type plt.show, plt and if I run a code, you can see here is the chart. 
So it is very clear that based on this chart, we can say that as time passes, the performance of the posts are becoming better and better because as you can see, as time passes, the number of followers of that Instagram page increases. So the number of people who likes the video increases as well. So in order to analyze and see, for example, what posts are performing better and what posts are performing worse, we should subtract and we should get rid of this time effect. And for doing so, we have a lot of things in time series, but we are not going to talk about it in this video. And we are going to take the easy approach, which is one of the method in time series, but it is very simple and it is not perfect. It is not very good for this purpose, but we are going to take the easy approach and we are going to calculate the differencing. So we are going to calculate the differencing with order of one. And I mean, we are simply going to calculate the difference between two successive points, the exact thing that we have done for the time column previously in order to make this time diff variable. So we are going to do the same thing for our like likes column as well. So here you want to add another variable. So I want to name it likes diff exactly like the uh, time diff variable and I simply type np dot diff and now we want to do the same thing but for the likes column so likes and I pass n I mean dif differencing with order of one there it is and here I want to plot this d likes diff on our chart so I'm going to copy this and I want to put this on the y-axis but there is a problem here and if I run a code I will get errors so let's see if I run the code you will get error because the size of these two are not consistent and why because when you use the differencing for example with order one you lose one data for example if you use a differencing with order of two you are going to lose two data and so on. So when you're using differencing with order of one, you are going to lose one data. So for example, if you have, I don't know, how many data do we have? Let's see. So if I print the len of our data frame and let's cut these lines. And if I run a code, you can see that we have 41 data. So basically we have 41 data and here when we use the differencing with order of one, we are going to have 40 data for the likes diff. So basically this is 40 data, but this one, which is from the original data is 41 data. So this is 40 and this is 41. And as you can see, these are not consistent. So we should use only 40 values of this column. For doing so, we simply type the values from the index one all the way up to the end. And remember that Python starts counting at zero, so we are not going to include the first value, I mean the value at index zero, but we are going to include the second value all the way up to the end. And second value in Python means the value at index one, because as I've told you, Python starts counting at zero. So zero is the first value, and one means the second value. So we are going to use the values at index one all the way up to the end. That's it, so here we have 40 values, and also here we have 40 values as well. So let's run the code and here is the result. So based on this chart, as you can see, these posts are performing better and these posts are performing worse. So once again, I should mention that we have taken the easy approach and but we could have used much better time series methods in order to subtract the influence of time from our data, but we have taken the easy approach. But also we want to add some other lines in order to see the performance in a visual manner. So in order to do so, we want to calculate two percentiles for our like stiff variable. So in order to do so, I simply type np.percentile and I want to calculate the percentile for the likes diff. And the Q is, for example, I don't know, for example, 80%. And for the next one, you want to calculate, again, the percentile for the like stiff variable. And the Q is, for example, 20. That's it. And let's sort this in a variable. Let's say Q80. And let's sort this in a variable. Let's say call 20. Q20. That's it. Then here, we simply type plt.ax h line i mean a line which is horizontal and it is along the axis and we want to add the q80 line and for example the color is going to be 
green at it and the line of style is going to be a dashed line and let's do the same thing but for the q20 and for example the color is going to be red and once again if i run the code you can see we have something like this and this green line means 80 percent of the data is below this line and this red line means 20 percent of the data is below this line so based on these two lines we can see that for example these posts are performing better than 80 percent of the posts so these are the top 20 percent and these posts are the bottom 20 percent of our posts now i really suggest you to watch this video which is on the screen now